as you may have seen from the subject matter, you know, I, I had to say goodbye to my best friend on December 1st, 2017. Um, I've had her for 12 and a half years and those were honestly the best 12 and a half years of my life. Yeah, she was just my best friend. She was always by my side every moment of every day. And so when she passed away, that was really, I think, the hardest day of my life. Like to say it was the hardest day of my life just sounds like, doesn't even sound important, but it really was the most difficult day of my entire life having to say goodbye to my best friend, who was like really like a child to me. If she didn't have her heart problems, she would have been around for definitely a lot longer, which also made saying goodbye really hard to deal with because I've had dogs in the past who have passed away and I mean, I thought it was so heartbreaking, but as much as it prepared me to say goodbye to Summer, I don't think anything could have prepared me for this. Just the loss was just immense. So before I get into that horrible day, um, I just wanna talk about how she came to be in my life. So basically in 2005, um, a couple years after my parents split up, my sister Jules, she really wanted another dog because we gave our two family pets to my dad. So our two dogs, he kept them because they were <laughs> obsessed with them. So it was only right that he kept those dogs. And Jules was especially close to our little dog Bogey who also passed away now. She found this little puppy and she told me a couple days before we got her, listen, we're going to get this dog. Mom bought her and she's coming soon. So I was shocked to hear that, but I was so excited. We kept it a secret from my dad and my other sister. It was the 5th of September, 2005. She was born in June. So she was shipped from Arizona and she came in this adorable little parcel and she really looked like, I mean, she was so scared and she was so cute and I remember grabbing her and bringing her in the car with us and on the way driving home with her, she was so cute. I took her out of the parcel and I was holding her and I was like, oh my God, I was just instantly in love with her. Long story short, because there's so many things that happened, but basically my mom was almost going to give the dog away because it was a lot of responsibility. So I told my mom, I said, you, you are not giving her away. Summer is my dog, she's my responsibility. I'm going to take care of her, leave her to me. You're not, you're not giving her away. Like drop the subject, it's not happening. And basically from that day forward, it's almost as if like Summer became my dog. It's like our bond just snapped into place and we were really inseparable ever since. I just knew I wanted her, she was mine, she was made for me. And that's all there was to it. And she gave me the best years of my life. And she came in my life at such a crucial point when I was really growing up. So in a way we really grew up together. She was super playful. I remember she would chase her tail and as she would get older, you know, she was just happy with just like hanging out with us and just relaxing with us. And her favorite thing to do would just to be sitting with us when we're at home by our side and just like she loved company she was not a solitary dog by any means she was really like a lap dog she would always sit on my lap i always knew how to cross my legs specifically she'd rest her little head on my leg and that was just the way it is like doing anything i'd go and eat dinner and she would just want to sit on my lap and just relax on my leg so she was just always like by my side i mean i'm really not used to the feeling now of not having her by my side so eventually like we had her for 10 years when we all lived together and then my sister and I, we moved into this condo together. And of course, moving in for some reason, my sister wanted to record a video of us showing Summer like the condo for the first time. And just, I was so excited to be starting like this like new journey with Summer right by my side. She was always with me. So of course I'm holding her and I put her down and she's walking around and she's exploring our condo. And I just never would have thought that this would be the last like home that she would know. Well, home, it like feels like a house without her in all honesty. She made our house a home really. She didn't like people coming to the house, but when she really got to know her and if she saw you frequently, she was just the sweetest girl in the world. I mean, even my boyfriend completely won her over because he loves dogs. So in the two years that he got to know her, you know, they they were also inseparable in a way. Honestly, without like the, the help and support of like my sister, especially Jules who lives with me and who's made, made sure like the first couple of days were the, the roughest and she made sure that I ate <laughs> and that I was drinking and stuff. and. You know, we're all taking the loss very, very, very hard. Me the hardest because she was like my little best friend and, and companion for so long. And that's why I took so long to even make this video. It's been basically two weeks now since she passed away. And I could, I can't even bring myself to, to believe that it's real, but it is, you know. My birthday was on the Wednesday, on the 29th of November. And I noticed that she just wasn't like herself that day. Jules and I were noticing that like she kind of didn't seem like 
herself like she wasn't really interested in eating which she would do that from time to time but all day she wasn't really interested in eating so we tried our best to get her to eat but she wouldn't eat and I was just thinking like that's okay like, I was with her all day like I, we had dinner plans later that night but I was with her the whole day monitoring her and she was just like tired she just looked a bit tired and a bit like she wasn't wasn't interested in food whatsoever so I went and sat beside her and I was hand feeding her like piece by piece and as soon as she started eating a bit from my hands it's like she got the appetite back and then she was starting to eat so I said oh you know good I don't have to worry about her when I'm gone for dinner for my birthday like she's she's like getting to be herself again so after she she was completely fine eating and drinking happy you know doing her typical little things that she would do just like stay by my side and you know she's going to the bathroom okay she was feisty if there was a knock on the door she would bark she was completely fine so I felt okay leaving her and when we got home from my birthday um, my family was going to come back to my house for cake so I came home and Summer was so excited to see me as always you know as soon as we open the door she's either waiting right by the door because she can hear us coming down from the hallway she was fine she looked like a little puppy so I was so excited to see her and obviously, you know, we're giving her a lot of attention and then I come back to my room because the first thing I do when I get home is put on my pajamas. And then we noticed that she was like doing this coughing sound, which she would do a lot when she drank water. But this time she didn't even drink any water. She just did that in her bed. So it made me look over and I must have just missed it. But my boyfriend saw because he was from this side. I was on this side. He saw her head drop and I saw after her head dropped, I saw her roll off the bed. And I'm thinking like, did she like accidentally fall or did something seriously bad happen to her so I run to her and I hold her little body to try to see if she can stay up but she wasn't like her legs kind of gave out so I'm freaking out because she's never done that before she's never fainted or anything like that in her life and I can only describe it as fainting I'm not even 100% sure what it was it must have lasted maybe a five second episode but she was alert after that but I was on I was on alert myself and I'm thinking like okay you're not getting out of your little dog bed because her dog bed was on the floor and she rolled out and I'm thinking you're not getting out of it I'm just gonna watch you until you seem okay and she's kind of looking at me like I'm, I am okay like relax you know like let me go and be excited that you guys are home so I just made her sit there for a while and then finally when my sister Jules came back and everybody else like my parents and stuff I was explaining to them what happened and they were shocked because they saw Summer, you know, looking fine. So when they heard that, they instantly, I could tell just the look on their faces, they instantly knew it was bad news. You know, my boyfriend was scared. I was scared. My sisters, they were scared. Like everyone was a little bit on alert, but she seemed so fine to us. Like if she was going to be sick after, we would have immediately taken her to the vet, but she was completely fine after. So I remember thinking like, please Summer, like don't do this to me on my birthday. And it's almost like right after I said that, like she was like fine. So it was, it was really weird. When I was opening my gift, she was sitting on my lap, you know, she was eating a lot. I remember right away I, I made her food and she ate it up right away and she was really happy. She was fine, she was gobbling up her food, she was relaxing with us, she looked happy and she looked alert and that looked like just a weird episode, but I was always on edge, so I remember always watching her, even when I was making her food, I was looking over at her and saying, where's Summer, is she okay, you know? I would always do that anyways, but I was extra on guard and pre like prepared to, you know, if anything bad would happen, if we'd have to make an emergency trip to the vet, I was prepared, but she was completely fine and she was fine all night, so I had a good birthday with her. Then it's weird, the next day, again, 100% fine. So this was on, after the Wednesday, on the Thursday, she was, completely fine right hungry right away in the morning had an appetite so I took her on the grass and it was a bit cold out but she was doing her little exploring and like little did I know that would be pretty much like the last time I take her out on the grass and she was just relaxing with us and it's like she was so content to just she was so content to just be by her side and like her favorite things to do eat sleep be with us and go outside you know and she she did all that that day so Thursday was her last really good day with us because she was completely fine I mean I remember going to bed that night with my sister we kind of went to bed and it was like um summer was like you know between my room and my sister's room there was like a space so whenever we'd go to bed you know summer would always come and follow me but it's like that night she was kind of in the middle summer and my sister was there and I was in my room and we went to bed a bit early because like we both kind of wanted to just read a bit before bed we said good night and just something about that night just felt a little bit weird it almost felt like summer didn't really want to say good night to us like she kind of probably wanted us to still stay together for for a while longer and then I remember Jules said oh she looks so cute right now and I thought yeah she really does and then I said, come on, Simon, let's go to bed, you know? So she just like came in and that's it. And that night just felt like, I felt like weird. Like I felt like I almost wanted to go into my sister's room or have her come into my room and like hang out with me in summer longer. But you know, you don't think like these things, you don't think it would be like the last good night. So that's like, if I have any regrets, that's just like one of them. You know, it's almost like she knew, but we did it. So Friday morning, I wake up, I heard Summer go to the bathroom, 
And ever since that episode on Wednesday, I, I was always more cautious of what she was doing. I would, I would always want to see, you know, is she okay? I was always on alert. Normally she, she starts the night with me in my bed. We go to bed together and eventually during the night, I mean, I move around a lot and that bothers her. So she'll go on the floor and she had two be dog beds in my room. She had one right beside me and she had one right on the foot of the bed. And that's the one that I kept because that was her favorite. When I heard her, I call her over and it's like, she looked at me. And I remember that she looked at me when I called her and then she just walked right over to her bed here. And now normally if I call her, she'd either come with me in my bed or she'd come to the bed right beside me to stay as close to me as possible. So when she kind of went off on her own, I was instantly like, I was instantly awake, you know, when you're half asleep and then like something will wake you up. So I was instantly awake. So I remember crawling to the foot of my bed right here and looking over at her on the floor and I said, Summer. And she just didn't even look up at me. And I thought that was so weird. Like she would always look up at me and like if I call her, she'd probably roll over and want a belly rub. Like her favorite things in the world were belly rubs. So, so I called Summer and she wasn't responding. So I went on the floor and she just seemed like out of it and like she didn't really have the strength to breathe properly. I heard her not panting or anything like that, but I heard her like breathing in and out pretty fast and like almost like as if it was like laborious for her to breathe. It took a lot out of her. So that's when I knew and I knew that I was going to have to go into my sister's room and give like the bad news to her. So, but I was worried, you know, so I kind of just stayed a couple minutes and, and then I said, you know what, like she doesn't look good. She, this doesn't look like it's good and I was hope you know you never think it's going to be the last day this was on the Friday December 1st you never think that it's like the beginning of the end but you're always worried and you always want to do like the best you can for them so I knew that as soon as I go into my sister's room and I told her like I felt like it was like the beginning of the end so I kind of had a couple more quiet moments with her you know trying to rub her belly and things like that because she loved that but she just looked like she was just uncomfortable so I went to my sister's room and when I would get up and go anywhere, she was always alert and she would follow me everywhere. If you heard me walking, you'd hear her little pitter patters. She didn't want to follow me and that's what I knew as well. Like, okay, it's not good. So I went into my sister's room quietly. I didn't want to freak her out and like wake her up, but I came into her room and I was just like, Jules, you know, it doesn't look good for Summer. She's acting like strange. So she came in my room and she looked at Summer and we could just tell that she wasn't really feeling good and then Jules was thinking, well, like, start getting ready, like, we're gonna have to take her to the vet. And I was thinking, okay, just, like, we're gonna take her, but it's super early now anyway, so let's just, like, relax for a bit, like, I'll get ready soon. I just wanted some more time with her, so I remember bringing her to my, to my bed and just, like, relaxing in my bed with her and I just had, had like, some good moments with her until I realized, like, yeah, you know, I do have to get ready, like, stop being so selfish, you know, like, as much as you want more time with her. Do what you have to do, get to the bottom of things, so... Luckily, like my, my sister Jen stayed home that day. I said, please, you know, you have to bring me to Summer's vet. I already called him. Like we have an appointment for 1040. So we took her to the vets and and he was checking her out and he was saying, okay, like let's do like some blood work. So we did the blood work on her. And as soon as he came back from doing the blood work, he was, he looked like he was scared. At first he was fine. I was the only scared one. And then he looked like he was scared. And then I saw that Summer's tongue was like she was panting now and her tongue was completely purple and blue. It looked really, like really bad. It's never been that color before. So I was extremely worried. And my sister even said like, why is her tongue that color? It's almost like he, he afterwards kind of realized in the beginning, I think he thought maybe she was gonna get better just like we did. But after when he saw all those signs, he almost was kind of telling me, okay, like he said, if she looks like she's not getting better, you'll have to take her to emerge. And he gave her a needle that was supposed to take away fluid from her heart. And that gave me hope that maybe it would be okay and maybe she'd get better and he said it's kind of like a double-edged sword because if she does get better you know that it is her heart but if she doesn't get better you know you're also still scared so obviously I knew it was gonna be like days of being on alert with her but that was fine you know obviously you'll do anything it takes right so we took her home and she just she didn't look good she looked worse than before because they said that what he gave her to take the fluid from her heart he said that it would make her go to the bathroom more so she did go to the bathroom and I remember bring her upstairs and she just looked horrible and like she, she it was difficult for her to breathe and her tongue was purple like the times that if she would ever pant it was extremely purple and she really wouldn't pant so the only way we would see it is if we would try to give her water and when she wouldn't take the water because she always would drink water no matter how sick she was she would drink water and that would always give me hope she was not drinking her water that made me so upset so I'd bring water to her lips try to get as much in and occasionally I did I got some water in my palm and it's like she couldn't she couldn't even drink and me and my sister were looking at each other and we knew that things were looking really bad and we had to get to the bottom of it because we couldn't leave her in this condition as if she was suffering you know she really did look like she was suffering so I called my dad and I said dad we're gonna have to take her to an emergency clinic so when we got to the clinic um 
the emergency animal clinic. Um, we let her pee outside and she did her last pee and it looked like she didn't even care to smell on the grass and she looked like she almost didn't have the energy to pee but she peed. When someone finally figured out, oh you're coming from there, okay, and then they immediately took her from me and they had to put her on oxygen and it's like they knew to be on high alert which worried me because I was thinking, okay, what's, what's going on? It kind of made you realize how bad she was. So right away they took her from me, they put her on oxygen and I had to fill up paperwork. So I did that and then we went to the room with my dad and with my sister and, and the emergency specialist, she explained to us, I mean as horrible as the whole situation was, she tried, she did her best to explain to us, but when we realized that it, she did have heart failure and there was nothing we could do, I don't know, it was just like all your hopes and you know. So when she told us, you know, I mean my sister and my dad, she was explaining that, you know, she was so weak and she was an older dog. She was 12 and a half. It's not like she was a young puppy who could, you know, go through these kind of things and be okay for sure, you know. She said that she was so weak at this point that if they were to have had to hold her down to do an x-ray, that it could have killed her. And I was thinking, like, how could this have been when she was fine the day before? She was fine yesterday. And she said that's what happens with the heart sometimes. <laughs> you're fine one second and then you're not. So when we realized that we really had no hope, she basically said, I can't even let you leave this clinic without making a decision. Either you try and operate, but she likely will die during the operation, or we have to put her to sleep. Because she said, if I let you take her home in this condition, the kind of death that, that a dog can have when they have heart failure is horrible. They basically like drown in their fluids and it's just a horrible, uncomfortable death. So I didn't want that for her. And as much as I didn't want to put her to sleep, I also couldn't stomach the fact that maybe she would die during surgery, not with me by her side, with other people like on a cold table and I didn't want that either. So and we had to do our best to keep each other strong, but we, we all lost it and then they were really nice. They gave us a lot of time and they let us think it over obviously before we made a decision. And once we said, yeah, of course, we'll, we'll put her down. We don't want her to die like that. We don't want her to die at home and, and have a horrible death. Like we want to give her the most humane death. When they're suffering and you know that they're going to go and it's their time, you have to, you really have to do it for them because it's not fair to, to watch them suffer. So weirdly enough, this, this was the shirt that I was wearing when she passed away in my arms. And before that, as soon as I got the news actually that I'd have to put Summer down, I remember calling my boyfriend on the phone and I said, please, like, you have to come, like, leave work, you have to come and, and see Summer before she goes. She loved him too a lot, so as soon as he got the news, he left work immediately and he managed to make it like, you know, he probably drove like a maniac, but he managed to make it on time. So when we were moved to the other room, they eventually brought Summer in and she was on oxygen and there was like an oxygen little tube that we would hold near her mouth if she would need it. They say the average breaths per minute is about 30 per minute and they said she was doing 120. So she was doing like four times the amount. She was really like giving it her all so that she could, you know, stay alive. So she was obviously on oxygen and um, she came in my arms right away and as soon as I saw her I knew like it wasn't even, it wasn't like the same dog that I had her, like the night that I went to sleep. It was, she wasn't the same. She looked extremely weak and she looked like, she was probably saying like guys this is my time, like you gotta let me go. I know I'm jumping back and forth but something's come to my mind. Just driving on the way to the clinic, my dad drove, my sister sat up front and I was in the back with Summer. And I remember she, every time we'd be in car rides, she was such a good girl in car rides and she would always sit on my lap and I remember bringing her blanket with her. And I remember thinking, I'm gonna give her her blanket and let her sit on it and if she wants to come on my lap, she can, but if she is more comfortable on the blanket, then let her stay there. And when I saw that she was more comfortable on the blanket and she was, she'd rather just sit on her own, I just remember having a bad feeling because I saw her and how independent she looked and how she looked like she was in another world. She looked like she was seeing something that I wasn't and she was staring out the window and it looked like, I don't know, it looked like she knew it was like her last car ride or something. So just seeing her like that kind of almost prepared me to get the horrible news that we did that we would have to put her down. But you know, you always have hope and you always think maybe this is a bad episode and she can take medication, even heart medication, and she could feel better or have a s surgery. So when you realize you have no hope and you're in that room with her in her final moments, it just all seems like surreal and it seems like it happened so fast. So my boyfriend ends up coming and he sees her and you know, she's almost too weak to really like show that she's comforted by her presence. I could tell that she was happy to be with us, but she had her little oxygen tube near her mouth and sometimes I'd give it to her and she'd kind of like push it away saying like, just stop, like let me go. As much as we wanted to hold on to her and keep her with us, you know, she was ready to go. 
So Summer had all of her loved ones around her when she passed away. She was in my arms. I'd look over at her, but I just wanted her to know that she was comforted in my arms. I didn't want to like put her by herself and look at her. I just wanted to her to know that I was holding her because I always held her. She was surrounded by love and she knew her time was up. She was fighting so long, almost now that I think about it, to just not leave me with that horrible memory on my birthday because she could have almost probably died that day too. And when they're gone, all you think about is like I would give anything to have like one final good day with them, to just be with them. And it's like weird because she, I did have that. Like I think that was her birthday gift to me is that she gave me one final good day with her on Thursday and I didn't even realize that until now. She was comfortable, she passed away in my arms and it was like a, a beautiful thing and I was holding her and you know, we're all with her saying our last final words, how much we love her so much. And even like the vet was, looked like she was going to get emotional because she could tell how, how much Summer was loved and how much she was a part of our family. So nothing can prepare you for saying goodbye to your child. That's what she really was to me, you know? I'm just happy knowing that she died peacefully as much as we, we were ready to let her go. She was ready to go. Dogs, unfortunately, they have such short little lifespans compared to our lives, but I think that's because they're too good, you know? <laughs> they're better than people. So they warn you, you know, when the dog passes away, you, it might leak fluids or things like that from the mouth and we said we don't care like we're dog people don't ever t take her away so as soon as they brought her to us they never took her away once and as soon as she passed away you know i wrapped her in her own little blanket because i gave a blanket there i wrapped her in her own little blanket that i brought with me i wrapped her up like a little baby and she looked beautiful and to see she looked beautiful might sound weird because she passed away but she looked absolutely beautiful like a, she looked like a little angel she was as gorgeous like leaving the world as she was coming in she was beautiful as beautiful as she was as a puppy she was just so gorgeous she's the kind of dog that comes around once in a lifetime really she was it was like we were soulmates like we really were we were made for each other she was made to come into my life a little dog from arizona coming to toronto you know she was made to be a part of my life and I would look at her when she was alive and I would think, you know, one day this little girl's going to break my heart. And there's nothing wrong with, with that. There's nothing wrong with feeling broken or being broken hearted. I actually was reading a book that gave me comfort. And I literally saw this quote today, so it's just really short and it just says, broken doesn't mean we're valued any less. It just means we've loved someone so much and so fiercely that losing them feels like we've lost a part of ourselves. And I mean, that is so true. That's exactly how I feel. I did dream about her that night. Briefly, it felt like it was surreal for a couple seconds. I dreamt that I was somewhere. And then eventually it looked as if she was just on the pillow beside my bed because sometimes I, I dropped like my, my pillows and she would just sleep on one of the pillows sometimes and I dreamt that she was there beside my bed. She looked so peaceful and I was petting her and she just looked so content and that dream gave me some comfort and that's the like only time I've dreamt about her since. I've had a couple signs from her since. I remember me and my sister bought like three advent calendars because we love Christmas and we were so excited for them and obviously December 1st is such a shitty day for us. Days after, um, Jules was saying like, Lee, let's open our advent calendars, you know, and we were thinking almost should we open the first day, like let's just open it. So the first advent calendar we got, we both opened it at the same time and um, I was like, oh my God, when we opened December 1st, I was thinking, oh my God, and she's like, I know, because she pulled out, it was like the Godiva one and it was like a little fox on it. And um, Summer always looked like a little fox to me. She really looked like a little like fennec fox or something. So when she pulled it out, it was like a, a little red chocolate with the fox on it. And she was like, yeah, I know it looks like Summer. And I, and I was like, no, mine's empty. And my advent calendar was empty on day one, on December 1st, just to like, like I feel like it was almost like, cause I, I was so empty and there was no joy in that day. So it was almost like poetic justice that there was no chocolate in there for that day for that specific advent calendar that I opened, so it shocked us, obviously. So I knew I'd have to make a video dedicated to her, and as painful as this was, and as hard as this was to film and to do, it gives me comfort in knowing that I can share my story with her because she was such an important little spirit in my life. And as shitty as their lifespans are and as much as they should live to be a hundred, they don't. But the time that I had with her, the joy that I had with her, I would never take back, not for all the pain in the world. Seeking comfort in people and things that make you happy 
is a good thing, you know, you should allow yourself to feel joy and if someone makes you feel better in a time like this, let them know and really thank them for it. So many people around me have really made me feel like myself again and I, I cannot be any more grateful for everyone around me who has helped me feel like myself and who have made sure that I've been okay and who have brought me moments of happiness and moments of peace and who have even commiserated with me in, in our sorrows. And To end this video, that might already be too long, I'm just going to read what I wrote about her and then after that. That will be the end of the video. Forever my puppy, best friend, love, loyal companion, child, my everything, my soulmate, my summer. The 12 and a half years I was blessed to have you always by my side is a time in my life that I will forever be grateful for. Your barely six pound little body managed to capture my heart upon seconds of meeting you for the first time back in 2005 when I was a young teenager. Our bond was as sudden as it was strong and once locked into place was a love that would last forever. We were as inseparable as two could be. I always thought to myself, how lucky am I? What did I do to deserve your undivided love and affection? What made you choose me as your mommy? Your little life was a responsibility that I took very seriously. You were always my puppy, but I never treated you as anything less than a little human soul. We were so connected and could easily communicate without words. I was always aware of how you felt and I did my best to ensure that you were constantly happy, full of love, delicious food, endless kisses, cuddles, and belly rubs, your favorite. You had a curiosity for life. You were always ready for a new adventure. You were always so strong and full of life and an example to me of how important it is to love and to let love in. If there is justice and purpose in this life, it is that you are safe, happy, and time where you are, unlike here on earth, will pass by in mere moments until we are reunited again. I feel comfort in thoughts of you now being reunited with all of your doggy friends, playing on endless sun-kissed green fields with all the vigor of a young girl once again. You never lost your playful spirit, which is why saying goodbye to a girl who was always a puppy in my eyes was the hardest goodbye I've ever had to say. Without you, the pain that I'm left with in your absence demands to be felt. That being said, I would never trade all those wonderful years with you for anything in the world. In the end, the love I had with you is worth the immense heartbreak of your absence. They say dogs are the only creatures who love you more than they love themselves. Your love, however, was so much more than that. Your love filled an emptiness I never realized existed until you left. Your mere presence was more comforting than anything I've ever known and without you by my side, as you always were, I truly feel lost. It is easy to take things and even moments for granted. Looking back now, I understand how even just one beautiful day made all the difference. Now that you are gone and all that I am left with are memories of our special time together, I understand that every moment with you, especially the most simple times, made all the difference. A moment when the thing that made you the happiest was simply being in our presence, you licking your paws on a comfy blanket, me right by your side on the couch, held every joy within it. That for you was always enough. Now you can't imagine what I would give to have a simple moment like that back. A seemingly normal moment that held everything in it. You managed to touch the lives of everyone who knew you, and I mean who really knew you and who saw your soul for what it was. Pure, innocent, profound, and full of love. In the end, on December 1st, 2017, you left this world in my arms, surrounded by your loved ones, and with as much beauty and grace as you entered it, looking like the angel that you are now. You were always an angel in my eyes, my sweet little girl that I was so blessed to have had to call mine for the entirety of your too short life here on earth. I truly loved you with everything that I am, and I will never stop loving you. A love like ours is eternal. It is never ending, much like your beautiful soul and spirit that I carry within me always. Until we meet again, my love, thank you for the best birthday gift I could have ever asked for. One last good day with you. Forever your mommy, Lisa.